Finally tonight, hitting the right note. Special correspondent Fred DeSam Lazaro returned to a remote Himalayan community in India for a story of promise and success. Good morning, everyone. Today we have a very special guest. She's not really a guest. She's one of our <laughs> own, Kushmita. Kushmita Biswakarma came home to her alma mater one recent morning, an unlikely journey from an unusual school that we first visited 14 years ago. It was early in 2004, just as the school's founder, Canadian Jesuit priest Ed McGuire, was choosing his next kindergarten class, screening a crowd of five-year-olds. Most of their anxious parents had never set foot in a school. Okay. Oh, good. Father McGuire was looking in particular for the last name Biswakarma, as in Kushmita Biswakarma, which is common among people on the lowest rung of the traditional social hierarchy. We're trying to pick the poorest we can find, huh? If someone comes and tells me my name is uh, Biswakarma, then uh, they've made 80% on our entrance test that we have here, you see. Admission meant a meal ticket. It's a rather well-balanced meal, plain, but very nutritious. Good nutrition was essential for learning, Father McGuire said, but good learning to get children to love school would take something more. So every child, almost from day one, was given a violin. Most of the students had never heard the instrument before, but their progress was easy to measure as you went up to higher grades. I would bet you that 95% of the children I have here have never owned a toy. All these children can do is sit around playing Mozart, lucky kids. The luckiest, perhaps, was Kushmita Biswakarma, whom we visited with her parents, sharecropper farmers living in a tiny tin roof home. We are happy, very happy. We, of course, did not have a chance to study. Now they are able to get an education. They can have a better life than we did. Kushmita was well on her way, under the tutelage of a German volunteer teacher. An eighth grader here, she would soon make an unimaginable leap for someone of her background, high school in Germany. She lived with the family of her mentor, Margaret Klein. Aside from high school, she was also accepted into a prestigious conservatory in Munich, getting a formal music education. She also used her keen ear to pick up the language, excitedly telling a friend here on home video about how her exams went. But back home just a few months later in 2005, there was terrible news. Father McGuire, the school's founder, died suddenly of a heart attack. He was 77. He was a much loved person by children, by people here in Kalampong. Yeah, it was a big loss for everyone. And, and more so because it was untimely. No one expected Father McGuire to go so suddenly. Yes. It must have been very tough on you. Yeah, it was, I mean, really had to tell everyone that I'm not Father McGuire. <laughs> it was. Father Paul de Souza says the transition was painful and there was very little money, especially after the school's original building became unsafe following earthquakes in the region. Money from German Jesuit organizations built a new and expanding campus. Through it all, Father de Souza says, the school has tried to be faithful to Father Maguire's mission. Music is used as a medium which is central to all that happens in Galiasha. To, to give them the joy, to give them the confidence, and help them focus in life on their studies. You like the violin a lot? Yes. Father D'Souza says music can start these children dreaming, aspiring to futures their parents could never fathom. 
I want to be an engineer. Army. Doctor. A teacher. However, the poster alum for the school, fittingly, is now a professional musician. Kushmita Biswakarma went on to earn bachelor's and master's degrees in music performance from the University of Nuremberg. She's performed before audiences across Germany and Europe. But performing at Gandhi Ashram, her school, was something different, she says. I'm so sorry. The tears brought on by a flood of memories of a profoundly special childhood, she said. It takes me back to my days when I entered the school, very new, fresh. I got the violin for the first time in my hand. It reminds me of where I come from, and that keeps me grounded. I feel home. Her German education is geared more to a career path in Europe and Western classical music. But that urge to feel grounded and home drove her to return permanently to India two years ago. She's worked to expand her repertoire, trying to establish herself in India's music capital, Mumbai, where the Bollywood film industry is also the main source of popular music. I needed to find out myself, like where exactly I, at last, I belong to, because it, it's quite difficult being in the middle of two big cultures, like India and Germany. You have to be you. A year ago, she married Tilok KC, whom she met on a flight to Germany. A native of neighboring Nepal who also grew up poor, he got a scholarship to attend college. He now teaches economics at a private high school in Mumbai and edits videos of his wife's performances. Still blows my mind, to be honest, actually, what she has done here. Yeah? Mm. Because very few people can claim to have started from the point where she did and have achieved this. Kushmita's parents still live in the same home, happy, they say, for the future of their three daughters, particularly proud of their oldest. We were very fortunate to get them into Gandhi Ashram. Kushmita is both like an eldest daughter and eldest son. She's done everything and everything possible for the family. You know, I would want to build them house. I would want to, you know, uh, buy land for them because they don't have their own land. And uh, we've been uh, staying in other people's land. And my parents work for those people. And I, I don't want them to do that anymore. Giving back is part of the culture here, Kushmita says to family and to the school community, whose pupils are often the first in their family with a real chance to escape generational poverty. Music touches the soul, she told them. And showed them. For the PBS NewsHour, this is Fred de Sam Lazaro in Kalimpong, India. Thank you. <laughs> what a wonderful story. Fred's reporting is a partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota.